So this is just another one of the, uh, uh, the looking at what happens with individuals. This fellow came in with a, a low back pain. They did a test on him. This is that patient report I was telling you about. And if you look at the first two columns, that's heart and temperatures, and they were not good. Skin conductance wasn't good. Now, he came in for back pain, not for a neurological examination. But what happened was he started under care, and at the mid one, at four months in, of care here, he had all of his signs and symptoms had disappeared. His back pain was gone. He was feeling great. And he asked that question that we get asked all the time. The question basically was, hey, doc, I'm feeling good. Do I need to keep coming in? So the guy said, well, let's find out. And he did another exam on him, and this is what it showed. It showed the heart had improved immensely, but it was still in a challenge. His hand temperatures, no change. He had something going on up here in the muscle tone that wasn't good on the right shoulder. So the question was, well, your nervous system isn't like it should be. We've still got challenges in here. What do you think we should do? He said, no, we're going to stay under care. And what was so nice about this is when you listen to people like John Davila, he said, this is the kind of evidence that we need to be able to prove the requirement, medical necessity for ongoing care. We can now demonstrate that things aren't right yet, even though all the signs and symptoms have gone. Four months later, this was the fellow. Looking much better, he still has some heart issues that they need to now specifically address. But the rest of his nervous system looking much better. So you can't rely on signs and symptoms to tell you whether people are right. So the practice application of what we've done with all of this is this. We can now prove need for care from a neurological foundation. We can prove need for care beyond symptom relief. And we can provide neurological proof of neurological change due to chiropractic care. How does it get any better than that from a chiropractic standpoint? That's what we've been lacking all these years. And now we can do it. And the instrumentation has been out there for about 20 years. We just didn't pay attention. We were so busy chasing that vertebral subluxation, we missed the neurological uh, implications of it. So we can improve your PVAs with patients' informed consent. They take a look and they make the choices. There is sports application, but there's more than sports application for this. I don't use the term wellness and care anymore. I use peak performance because that's what we truly can do now. We can focus on that woman who now says, the only thing wrong is my hand temperatures. Great, let's get the peak performance focused on that. Let's get you retraining and stuff. What we can do for you chiropractically and what you can do for you retraining-wise to get your hand temperatures back up. And you can learn how to control that. And we give the power back to the nervous system, which is where it should be. And chiropractic facilitates that power reintegration and that redevelopment. And nothing does it better than the chiropractic adjustment because it puts a a pattern interrupt into a bad pattern in the nervous system and allows it to reset itself. That's what we do with the adjustment. And you now have new income centers and biofeedback. So you can increase your personal confidence, your effectiveness of your care. The doctors can use this on themselves, and I suggest you do. I have a resting heart rate of 56, 56 beats a minute. I'm 68 years old. I have a respiration rate that's under normal. I have good heart rate variability because I use this equipment. You can increase your income by having people coming back for the right reasons, not because we're trying to sell them something, but because we can offer our ongoing care to improve their nervous system function. You can then apply the, the uh, income of the biofeedback retraining in your office, and it, it offers us a great opportunity. So, Dee, Dee I think we've got about five minutes to go. You want to talk about this? Um, yeah, actually, I'll just go over it quickly because I want to be able to open it up for questions at the end. Um, this is the basic price of the, the NeuroInfinity and the NeuroInfinity Plus. Um, the system does qualify for the Disabled Access Tax Credit uh, based on sight and sound. If you are in the United States, that would apply. Um, we do take trade-ins on the existing SEMG equipment, so if you want to call me and let's chat about that, we can. Um, my direct line is 877-233-0022, or you can email me. That's dede, D-E-D-E, at neuroinfinity.com. Okay? And we can go over everything that's included with, with, the, um, with the NeuroInfinity and the NeuroInfinity Plus. There's a three-day hands-on training center that we run with uh, Dr. Ken Vinton and Dr. Rich Applin and myself. Um, and you get hands-on on this equipment doing this, so it's not like you, you know, watch somebody else do it, you do it. So you come out very confident. You can bring staff to that training, too, so it, it's great. And then there's the teleclasses that I'm going to be on here in a minute to help this out. 
So, uh, you know, this is time for us to have the leaders step forward in this profession and let's get it turned around and heading in the direction that it was supposed to have been uh, 114 years ago until we got off track. Uh, you can hang back and be the last one over the bridge, but by that time, all the food is gone on the other side. Okay. Thanks for attending, everybody. Um, it was a great webinar, and again, we're here for any questions uh, that you have.